What's going on guys? Here's week five of the off season. I uh, just kind of wanted to touch base and go over uh, how these next this next three week wave is going to get switched up a little bit. Um, still sticking with the eights for squats but moved to uh, the duffalo bar so that way it's um, kind of transitioning more to a lower bar and still getting in some good work and then after these three weeks weeks we'll move to uh, back to the safety squat bar for sets of six uh, got some squats in with Kaylee today and uh, she's doing five by five she's about um, 14 weeks out from her next meet so right now she just finished up a volume phase and now she's going through a bit of a, a strength volume phase um, it's, a, it's a lot of fun programming for her because she's still you gotta make sure she gets in enough volume and gets in enough work so that uh, her physique continues to grow um, but also you got to make sure that you taper everything off when it comes time for a competition you know as much as I'd like to keep pushing her and have her get ready for her figure debut next year um, still want to perform well on the platform and the best way to do that is to uh, taper off the volume and stuff so it's uh, it's been a challenge programming for her but I think at our next meet she should do really well and we'll be able to see kind of the uh, fruits of her labor once she's uh, able to perform and add some pounds to her total um, but like I said eights here on the uh, duff low bar and then we'll be moving up to a little bit heavier next week and then the following week will be the hard week where we push to an eight rep max and uh, see what we get and the reason I do that is just it's kind of like a, a built-in deload so to speak because um, I still want to keep the volume high because it is a volume phase so I just taper up the intensity a little bit and I know that really doesn't do as much uh, work to reduce fatigue and deload you but it, it's enough right now for me to uh, to where I can recover week to week and get a little bit better each week so 442 is the starting weight um, next week probably move up to about 480 something and then from there we'll see how it goes uh, into the fives for the uh, the max set of eight you know but everything is just uh, the plan set in place the weights aren't picked until I start moving in the gym and you know feeling how how everything's going uh, checking out the velocity device make sure everything's moving at a good speed and just go from there and uh, with the deadlifts afterwards uh, moved on to two inch blocks and I'll be doing did four sets of six here keeping with the same rep and set scheme and I'll be moving up to uh, four inch blocks after this three week and then back down to two and then back down to the floor and that should give me plenty of time to uh, dial everything in for the meet. Uh, the reason I'll do this is because having the blocks in place for volume is, is allowing me to uh, get in better positions and it's allowing me to work my hips a little bit more by getting a little overload work in but biggest thing is just working better position each and every time. Uh, working on sumo deadlifts it's all about technique and positioning and the more I can work on it the more I can ingrain it the better things are going to be so that's kind of the plan with uh, with the reasoning behind the blocks moving them up and then moving them back down and then also on this day uh, instead of doing the belt squats I started adding in some pause squats so just getting a lot of work in uh, removing some of the bodybuilding accessories this next three weeks and sticking to more of the compound movements to uh, to really push things up a notch so pause squats here um, everything felt really good same principle keeping it light until um, the weeks to come and then bumping it up each week and just seeing how everything goes started off with 352 pounds here for um, four sets of five and about a one second pause in the hole uh, always making sure that you get good depth and techniques on uh, no point of pushing weight if you can't produce good technique and good technique is doing things in a legit manner meaning that you're able to go to competition depth go to competition pauses and not creating excuses why you can't do that you know I was talking to Chris the other day about it is you know the biggest fallacy uh, we see in a lot of training is people people grind a lot people do heavy singles a lot in training people miss a lot of reps and um, they're so worried about just pushing the weight that their technique seems to falter and uh, for some reason they they don't really seem to care as much you know they just rather whether it be through social media put the weight up and show everyone that they got it 
uh, even if it is high, even if their butt does come a mile off the bench, you know, things like that is not necessarily the greatest way to perform on the platform, which I'm sure you'll see if you follow guys on Instagram and ladies that post a lot of one rep max videos all, all the time. Um, you'll notice that they're there's not much of a progression to their performance on the platform. You know, they'll, they may, it may work for a little bit, but things will taper off pretty bad. And uh, you'll notice that there's a, a slight decline in a lot of their stuff. And most likely they'll get injured along the way. So it's definitely one thing to push the limits. It's another thing to make sure that you're doing it technically sound and you're doing it to standard. And that way um, you're able to progress and you're not able to kind of overshoot your boundaries and get hurt and you know worst case scenario bomb out out of meat I think any good lifter um, besides like having a huge weight cut should never bomb out of a meat um, obviously if you do a big weight cut and your strength gets uh, gets hurt a little bit and you're, you just weren't ready for it then yeah I mean I can see that happen but if you're squatting high all throughout training and you're just chasing numbers chances are you're gonna bomb out because you set your opener too high but you hit it in training but it was also high so just keep those things in mind while you're setting up your training plan you know not everything has to be a one rep max and not everything has to be a grinder you know solid fluid motions good technique and sound movement is gonna be the best principle to build a bigger total bigger foundation um, after the squats and deadlifts the next day came in and did some back work uh, just keeping it simple I'm um, getting some good volume in on these days and uh, just building a bigger back so that I'm able to bench better, I'm able to pull better, and I'm able to squat better. You know, the one the one body group that translates well to all of them is going to be some back work. And um, the more back work you can get in and recover from, the bigger your back can grow, the stronger you'll become. And that's kind of the key to everything, is just building up a big solid foundation for all your muscles and that way you can uh, put it to good use. To the gym, finished up with the back workout. Uh, pretty simple day, just keeping it relatively, relatively easy. Four exercises, uh, some pulls vertically, and then some pulls horizontally. I uh, did two lat exercises back to back, just because they were feeling good and the lats were feeling engaged. So just mixed up different grips and did four sets there. Then moved on to uh, the row machine. Did five sets there, superseted it with um, straight arm lap pull downs. Then went and did some meadows rows with some uh, curls. And then finished up with the cable rows with uh, some cable curls as well. So very simple, not a lot of failure sets, not super, super heavy. Just good enough to get a good pump and get in and out and just keep building. You know, that's what this day is for, is just to build and build and build. So I'm pretty happy with the way these uh, back days are going. I feel like I'm growing for sure. So speaking of growing, a little bit of diet update. Uh, putting on some weight, so you'll start to see it as my face gets fatter and my shirts get tighter. Uh, it's, a, it's a quest that I know I need to go on. The best guys at 242 are sitting around 255, 260, and I am at 237, 240. So I'm just gonna keep pushing, pushing, and pushing. And the way I have it outlined is um, three days a week. On training days, I'm having eight meals. The other two training days are going down to seven meals. And then my two off days are gonna be at six meals. And what I'm gonna slowly do is increase each uh, day to be about eight meals. Um, on the eight meal day, I pretty drastically decreased my protein. Um, just because my carbohydrates went up so much so when you have a lot of carbohydrates in your diet you don't really need as much protein because they're they're protein sparing so you know utilize that as much as you can um, also take in uh, glucose disposal agents on my higher carb days and on higher carb meals and uh, just to, that way just try to keep insulin sensitivity relatively high um, also take in a few other uh, glucose disposal agents, putting cinnamon on stuff, 
biggest thing is like when you're trying to gain weight and put on size is you want to keep insulin sensitivity as high as possible and the longer you can do that obviously the more advantageous it's going to be the better the gains once your insulin sensitivity starts to decrease then you start to get a little bit fatter and you get a little bit chubbier and you start to lose pumps so that's a good indicator that maybe you need to either add in some insulin sensitizers or lower the carbohydrates um, and raise the fats. That way you keep the calories still pretty high or you know maybe do a mini cut. So a lot of things to play around with, experiment with, but the biggest thing is my goals are performance based, right? I want to total 2,000 in the near future and then obviously trying to break the all-time world record total at 242. And, uh, you know, it may not be, you know, my genetics don't really adhere to staying lean when I'm gaining weight. So it's one of those things where you got to put your performance goals over your physique goals sometimes. That doesn't mean I'm going to eat like crap. Uh, 90 90 percent of my food is going to be clean bodybuilding style. But regardless of how clean you keep it in your fear and a calorie surplus and you don't necessarily have the best genetics for staying lean me I've been chubby and uh, fat my whole life so always fighting against that it's easy for me to put on weight but it's not necessarily always the prettiest way even if it is 100% clean so I've come to the conclusion of that a while ago and uh, you know it's, it's one of those lines that you try to stay on as much as you can by trying to be relatively lean but also add size you know especially for my profession I mean, nobody wants to hire a fat nutritionist even if they are the strongest person at the gym strongest person in the world um, but you know it's one of those things where I'm putting performance ahead of my aesthetic goals and I've been doing that for the last two or three years and it's been paying off really well so I'm just gonna keep pushing that I'll keep you guys posted I'll probably do a couple videos of meal prep and what I'm eating throughout the day and just go from there as always guys thanks for watching make sure you share like and subscribe until next time catch you guys later